Whether it's Bluetooth, USB, or Wi-Fi, every technical standard goes through iterative upgrades over time. The next generation of Wi-Fi brings faster transfer speeds and lower latencies, improving the connectivity of these interfaces. It seems that we've barely begun to see Wi-Fi 6 hardware out in the wild, and Wi-Fi 7 is already on the horizon, so let's check out what's new about Wi-Fi 7. This new standard promises network speeds on par with an Ethernet connection, with low latencies to support ping-dependent functions. Actual numbers are still hard to come by, since we're yet to see any devices using it, but Wi-Fi 7 is expected to offer speeds of about 40 gigabits per second. MediaTek and Qualcomm have already demonstrated the new capabilities in live demos to enterprise clients and are promising an official rollout by the end of this year. Wi-Fi 7 is optimized for the delivery of video content, along with low latency to help smooth over things like gaming. This comes in handy not only for entertainment apps, but for enterprise users as well, for VR and AR implementations. Real-time video transmission will be easier than ever on a wireless network that uses Wi-Fi 7. Wi-Fi 6 offered 160 MHz of bandwidth and 8 simultaneous spatial streams, but Wi-Fi 7 straight up doubles this capacity, offering 320 MHz of bandwidth and 16 streams. This makes it easier than ever to create wireless mesh networks to connect to multiple devices at the same time. This multiple input, multiple output capability also enables users to set up a network of smart home devices, giving a considerable boost to the Internet of Things. The Wi-Fi 7 specification also comes with a brand new multi-link operation technology, allowing multi-user access to separate bands and channels at the same time. The Wi-Fi Alliance has been trying to procure a new spectrum band for wireless technology for a long time. The 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz frequency bands, while getting the job done, are nowhere near wide enough to ensure the utmost precision. Recently, Wi-Fi was finally allocated the 6 GHz band, marking the first fresh spectrum allocation in a long time. Wi-Fi 6E opens up a lot of untapped space for wireless transmissions on enabled devices. This gives the wireless communication standard much more room to work with, though it also makes it harder to manage connections across multiple bands. Wi-Fi 7 has been built to solve this problem. It can efficiently utilize the non-contiguous spectrum bands and provide better connectivity. Older Wi-Fi 5 access points have trouble providing reliable high-density connections even with the 5 GHz band. To combat this, Wi-Fi 6 introduced Quadrature Amplitude Modulation, or QAM. This packs more data into the same amount of spectrum, allowing high-density data transmission without hardware changes. Wi-Fi 7 takes this even further, turning 1024 QAM into 4096 QAM, which can compress even more data into the limited bandwidth available. We'll probably see Wi-Fi 7 enabled routers hitting the market no earlier than 2023. Even Wi-Fi 6 is yet to be properly rolled out, with most PCs and smartphones still using the older version of the standard. Should you care about Wi-Fi 7? The short answer is yes. This is probably the biggest generational leap for Wi-Fi, promising to bring it in line with wired Ethernet connection performance. Of course, if you're already happy with what you have today, there's no rush to upgrade. But if Wi-Fi 7 works out as well in real life as it does on paper, we might see the end of wired home networking in the near future. See you next time.